Hello everyone! Today we are going to talk about differential. I will tell you what a differential is, why it is needed at all, what its structure is, what types of differential exist and how they differ. And also I will explain to you why a differential is a boss very important and at the same time is disturbing component in the car. All in order, let's get started. Also, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel, it's completely free and you can always change your mind and your subscription will support me and encourage me to create more. Thank you, let's start talking about differentials. So, what is differential? A differential is a special mechanism that is located on the axle in the car it's task to make sure that wheels can spin at different speeds when needed. And it is necessary quite often. See a common example. The car is turning. When turning, the car goes through a half a circle. But this half a circle will be different for the right and left wheels. Let's look at the picture. Here is our car, here is the distance it will travel, and look for the left wheels. The radius of the circle will be larger, and for the wheels that are closer to the center of the circle, the radius will be smaller. If we calculate the length of the circles, the length of the circle for the left wheels will be larger than for the right wheels. That is, they will cover different distances at the same wheel revolutions. That is, for example, the right wheels will spin, the tires will spoil and the car will be very hard to control when turning. That's what a differential for. It relocates the rotation of the wheel so that one does not spin unnecessarily when the wheel cover different distances. I hope you understand what the differential is for, so let's move on to its structure. So, structure of the differential. As I said earlier, the differential is located on the drive axle of the car. That is, if your car has rear wheel drive, the differential will be placed on the rear axle. If the front wheel drive, then on the front axle. And if all wheel drive, then the differentials will be on front and on the back axle of the car. To better understand the structure of the differential, let's look at how torque is transmitted from the engine to the wheels. First comes the engine, then the gearbox, then the drive shaft, and then we have already reached the differential. Let's look at the picture of the structure of the differential. Here is the same drive shaft which is connected to the so-called crown gear. Satellite gears are rigidly connected to the crown gear, which are then connected to the sun gears, that is, to the axles to which the wheels are attached. Yes, how it works. Everything is quite simple. Torque is mainly transmitted through satellites, which transmits it only to those wheels with less load. For example, when the car turns, the wheels in which direction the car is turning receive more load. That is, the differential wheel transmits less torque to them and more torque to the wheels that pass a larger circle when turning. And that is, turn more easily, which means less load. We can see it in this simulation. At the moment when the left wheel stops spinning for some reason, the differential begins to transfer all of the torque to the other wheel. And this is how the differential redisturbs the torque depending on which wheel has more load. But this is where the main disadvantage of the differential appears. Imagine that your car is stuck in the mud. A wheel that has fallen into the mud cannot be fixed on the surface in any way, it does not feel any load. While the other wheel standing on the solid ground receives almost all the load on itself. So, to which wheel will the differential transmit all the torque? Of course, where the load is less, and then, wheel that received the load will start scrolling in the mud. And the wheel that could actually pull the car out of the strap will not receive any torque from the differential. This is the minus of the differential. If the car is stuck, he prevents it from leaving the obstacle, be it snow, mud, sand or something else. Let's look at it in the game. The car has all the drive, all the load is transferred to the right wheels, and the left one hangs in the air. With the differential engaged, it predictably starts spinning in the air, but if I lock the differential, then the both wheels start to spin equally. That is, sometimes, especially on an off-road, 
there is a need to lock the differential in order to pass some obstacle. In modern cars this is sometimes done automatically, that is the system notices that the wheel has started to spin and then the car locks the differential to drive away from the obstacle. Very comfortable. I hope I explained everything successfully and now you understood the structure of the differential, so let's move on to the types of differentials. There are two types of differential, interwheel and interaxle. The first is located in the housing of the rear axle, on vehicles with a rear wheel drive, or in the gearbox housing, on front wheel drive cars. The second is between the axles of all wheel drive cars. There are also many varieties of structure of differentials, but this is a rather large topic, so I will not insert it into this video. If you would like me to make a video on different types of differential structures, then write in the comments, I will definitely make it. Well, that's all for now. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. Please like this video to support it. I'm very grateful for your likes and don't forget that you can write comments. I always answer them. Thanks again for watching. See you in the next videos.